Good morning. Today is Sunday, uh, November 27th. This is the last Sunday of November. Actually, is the first Sunday of Advent. We've been looking at the book of Philippians throughout the Sundays of November, kind of uh, thinking of Thanksgiving, which we just celebrated last Thursday. And so, uh, so we have Philippians chapter 4, kind of finishing up the book of Philippians. Uh, next week, uh, as we continue in the season of Advent, we're going to have some Advent themes uh, to our faith at home with Pastor. But today I, I want to look at the Philippians chapter 4. So let's begin with prayer. Lord, thank you so much that because of what you have done for us that we can rejoice in the Lord always. Again, we say rejoice. Help us to do that in our lives uh, because of what you have done for us. Thank you for uh, the Thanksgiving that we celebrated with family and friends this past weekend. Uh, be with us now as we uh, continue through a new church year, beginning with the first Sunday of Advent that we have today, uh, that we can live thank-filled lives, Lord, rejoicing always. We pray everything in Jesus' name. Amen. So let me read to you chapter 4. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I plead with Yodia, and I plead with Syntyche to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, Put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last I have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to, have, to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good for you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving or receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid again and again when I was in need. Not that I am looking for a gift, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. I have received full payment, and even more. I am amply supplied, now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet all the saints in Christ Jesus, the brothers who are with me, and send greetings all the saints send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. So that's always been one of my favorite chapters of the Bible. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I would say rejoice. You know, I think we can look at chapter 4 and really maybe read it as, as a prayer, as meditation. You know, thinking about what some of the stuff that Paul is encouraging the members of the Philippian church to do. You know, and, and I've written down a few of these things. talks about having a joy-filled life, having a gentle attitude, a worry-free attitude, a prayerful life, a thankful heart, a peaceful life, positive thoughts, practice what I've learned, be content, Christ empowers us, willing to help you know look at each one of those things and we can ask ourselves is this a strength of mine or is this a weakness of mine and what can i do to make it a strength once again joy filled life gentle attitude worry free attitude prayerful life the thankful heart 
a peaceful life, positive thoughts, practice what I've learned to be content, having Christ empowering us and willing to, to help others. You know, rejoice in the Lord always. You think about how can my life always be one of, of joy? You know, rejoice in the Lord always doesn't mean that we're constantly praising and lifting up prayers and praises to God. But everything that we do throughout the day is joy-filled. It doesn't mean that we're always happy. Joy and happiness are really not the same thing. You know, you can have a joyful heart and yet at the same time be sad. But we are joy-filled because of Christ and our connectedness to Christ. And so I think we can be joyful even when even at the same time sad because of things that we may be experiencing. We may be frustrated, but at the same time, we can still have joy because joy is found in our relationship to God. And, you know, something that cannot be taken away, that God will always be there for us. Another word I see in here that I think is so important, Paul talks about being content uh, in any and every situation whether hungry or, or well-fed, in need or in want, having need or having everything you need but or being in want, uh, to be content. There's always going to be some people that have more than you do. And I think there are so many times people are miserable because they're not content in what they have. You know, and, and, and the secret of contentness, I think, is so important. And so I think that Paul certainly says that in, in the book of Philippians, in many other places as well. And so I think I think for us to, to think about are are we content in what God has done for us? You know, I'm gonna read some statements. Just think about do you agree with this or disagree with this? Only when I am growing in joy and trust will I willingly share my faith with others. That's something to think about. Um, only when I am growing in joy and trust will I willingly share you know, I think there is a connectedness between those two things. Is it impossible to always be joyful in the Lord? I don't think it is. And I kind of shared a little bit about joy is, is kind of what's in your heart. A gentle attitude means to be ready to back down when you are challenged. That's kind of an interesting statement to think about. Um, having God's peace and being safe in Christ means that I'm not going to have to struggle any longer, or worry, fear, doubt, and, and other forces destructive to my faith. You know, like I said, we're still going to have some problems, worries, and struggles. Uh, but yet, we have that contentedness, uh, that joy within us, because we know Christ is there for us. Uh, the joy Paul is speaking of is a joy of knowing that the forgiveness of Christ surrounds us, our faults, and our mistakes. I like that statement. I would agree with that statement. It is easier for a contented person to reach out and help others than it is for a disconcerted person. I think there's, there's probably truth to that as well. You know, when you are content, you are much more likely to look beyond your circumstances. I think the struggles that we have is that we, we always look, sin is our thoughts drawn inward. And I think that happens so many times, is that we have selfish thoughts. We think about our own circumstance. Uh, but if you're content, I think that will help you to then look beyond what's going on in your life because you're content. And you will then seek ways of, of helping the people that are around you. So I'm going to go ahead and end there. I think, uh, you know, just reading through Philippians the last four weeks, uh, and just thinking about some of the truths that we find in this book, in Paul's letter to Philippians, I think certainly can help us as we live our lives here in this world. So let me conclude with a prayer. Lord, thank you so much once again for all that you have done for us, the faith you have given to us, and help us to be content in the lives that we have, and, and at the same time to have goals and desires to reach out to the people that are around us, beginning with our family and friends, and moving on from there. Use us as your servants, Lord, bless us, that we may be a blessing to others. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and uh, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be starting next week as we move through December, 
uh, and move through the season of Advent. But I'll be doing something a little bit different. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you next week.